After years of Intel being the top choice for gamers and content creators, AMD's Ryzen is here and successfully launches a plethora of CPUs across a variety of different price points. With the Ryzen 7 CPUs offering 8 cores and 16 threads, and the X370 motherboard supporting multiple graphics configurations and various connectivity options, there was clearly a need for a mainstream part for those who didn't need that level of performance or features. My name is Paul, and in this Red Gamer Technicum video, we're going to be looking at these very options by exploring the B350 chipset and AMD's Ryzen 5 6-core lineup. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Ryzen 5 1600X and MSI's B350 Tomahawk motherboard. As a full disclosure, we were given these products jointly by MSI and AMD for review, but all opinions of the hardware are our own, and this is not a sponsored video. Going through the AMD Ryzen 7 1600X first, it is a 6-core, 12-thread processor with a max clock speed of 3.7GHz, assuming there's no overclocking involved, which we'll discuss in a future video, and 16MB of level 3 cache. The CPU is currently retailing for $249, US aiming squarely to take on Intel's i5 lineup, such as the veteran Kiwi Lake 7600K. MSI's B350 Tomahawk features everything you'd expect on a B350 based chipset, plus a little more besides. A single M.2 slot, dual memory support thanks to 4 DIMMs, and runs RAM at 3200MHz plus and 64GB of RAM support, 2 PCIe slots, x16, which of course supports Crossfire but not SLI, 4 SATA 3.0 ports and a swathe of USB 3.1 and USB 2.0 support, plus the usual audio configuration options, including a, a, a MSI's Nehemic. Aesthetically, the board is lovely looking, at least in my opinion, with various blacks and dark greys broken up with an odd dab of dark red, plus LED lighting strips in the pertinent areas of the motherboard. Despite this board only costing around $130, US MSI have wisely kept the steel armor on the PCIe slots from its higher-end SKUs, although unfortunately it's missing on the DDR4 slots. There's also MSI's usual touches, such as the touted military class components and full support for Mystic Lighting. The motherboard performance was rock solid, with experienced no crashes, hangs or weird errors. Like any other motherboard from AM4, we would absolutely certainly suggest that you update your BIOS, which we did the moment we got our board. BIOS options, however, are plentiful, allowing you to tweak the motherboard enough to increase voltages or to the CPU, RAM, adjust frequency, and disable things you don't need. For example, LAN if you're using Wi-Fi or adjust CPU options such as Ryzen SMT. It doesn't quite have the number of options on a high-end X370 board, but for the price, what do you expect? MSI's BIOS also offers Game Boost, allowing CPU performance increase, increasing. Uh, AXMP, which attempts to replicate XMP from Intel on, AM, on AMD's platform. Your mileage on this will probably vary on your choice of DIMMs. There is also a hardware monitor, which is handy to see what's installed on your board, adjust fan profiles, and whatever else you can imagine. Looking at a preview of the board and AMD's Ryzen 5 1600X performance, it falls right in line with what you would expect from AM4. New BIOS revisions will likely improve performance, but in many games there's not a huge difference between Ryzen 5 and 7, assuming they're operating at a similar clock speed across most titles because they're not really optimized for multi-threading. With this said, in games which tend to favor lower numbers of threads but are more clock, uh, clock speed sensitive, Intel's KB Lake platform is faster, but there are a few caveats. The first thing is that it only happens in situations you're not pushing the resolution or graphics so that you're GPU bound, which generally doesn't happen in gaming. Generally, of course, you're going to push the resolution and graphics options as high as possible. The second is that we don't know if this will change in the future for a number of different reasons, as developers get used to optimizing for the Ryzen architecture, and of course, new drivers and BIOS revisions emerge from AMD and their partners, Labs. And with that said, for the moment at least, Ryzen isn't quite on the same level of performance as Intel if the GPU isn't a limiting factor, but for the same price point, Ryzen is a powerhouse and it's very hard to argue against the sheer value proposition on offer. 12 threads and 6 cores for just $250, US and MSI's B350 Tomahawk for just $130 US means you have the makings of a very powerful gaming rig, yes, but it also one can do so much more 
For example, 3D rendering workloads, development, programming, and of course, if you're a Twitch streamer, all excel rather well on Ryzen, especially, once again, for the price point. We'll be releasing more Ryzen 5 videos over the next few days, which will focus more across a variety of different applications, and whether it's a better buy than a KB Lake system, or perhaps whether the Ryzen system is just best for you. And of course, discussing optimizing the Ryzen CPU and motherboards for overclocking and performance. Our first impressions of the B350 Tomahawk remain very positive. The board was well thought out in terms of layout, feels and looks high quality, it's feature packed and solid as a rock, with no stability issue in installing drivers, crashes or any other problems. If you're looking for a B350 motherboard, we wouldn't hesitate to recommend it, but we'll have a more in-depth analysis soon. As for the Ryzen 5 1600X itself, the only fawn in its side for this CPU is the 1700, which can be had for around 310 US dollars, which is just $60 more. But for most gamers, at least for now, six cores is more than sufficient. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, normal stuff, like, share, comment, and hopefully you'll subscribe and click that little bell icon as well. But with all that said, Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.